Now, first of all today, let's start with airports. And Mayor of London, Boris Johnson, who's been setting out his vision for the future of London's airports this morning. As well as his pet project for a hub in the outer Thames estuary, dubbed Boris Island, the Mayor has also endorsed Lord Foster's plan for a new hub airport on the Isle of Grain in Kent, or a major expansion of Stansted Airport. He branded anyone who supports Heathrow expansion quite simply crackers and said the Heathrow area should instead be redeveloped with new houses. What do you think about that idea, first of all, Caroline Lucas? Is it worth spending £15 billion to buy Heathrow and turn it into a, another London borough? Well, we certainly need more housing, but I'm not convinced this is the best way to do it. And with Boris, you know, you really can't keep up with him. Every two moments he's coming up with another idea of where he'd like another airport. And the bottom line is, as the government itself actually knows, and I had this in a response from one of the ministers, saying that they do recognise that aviation growth has to be constrained. So we need to learn to live within the capacity that we've got, to use it better uh, for environmental reasons, and indeed all of the economic reasons that are often cited for airport expansion um, are, are vastly overstated and, and really have been probed quite strongly in recent months. How are they overstated, though, Caroline Lucas? Because business, and we've had various business leaders on, and also London First, who have said... We're at full capacity pretty well at Heathrow and actually without any expansion the economy particularly in London the South East will be really damaged. Well that's what they're saying in Schiphol, in, um, in Paris, you know that's the same message all the time, the idea that we're going to lose out or other countries will lose but out. But we are losing well, out. Well we're not, if you add together the capacity of all the London airports then that is far and away above what other uh, you know respective capitals can come up with in other European countries so we're already we have more capacity but what I'm saying is that that same argument, saying that if we don't expand, then business will go to France or Amsterdam or somewhere else, but is exactly what they're being told. And the bottom line is that if we're serious about climate change, we know that aviation already accounts for around 12% of uh, climate change emissions in Britain. If we carry on unconstrained, that could rise to 30% of our greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. So if people really want to use almost a third of our greenhouse gas emission budget on aviation, then that would mean there's very little left for most other aspects of, of business. There's a really interesting programme as well that the WWF, Worldwide Fund for Nature, are working with with businesses, where more and more businesses are actually saying that they can be more efficient through video conferencing and so forth. Not always, not for every business, of course, but there's a lot of capacity around that as well. But the reality, I mean, the figures just don't support your argument that we aren't already at full capacity. Heathrow is already full, running at 99% of its currently permitted traffic and in 2011 passenger numbers rose by 4% at Heathrow and 3% at Gatwick. The Department for Transport forecasts that all major airports in the South East will be full by 2030. I mean it's sticking your head in the sand to say that we can't and we mustn't expand further. I think it's sticking your head in the sand to say that we can go on expanding ad infinitum when we live on a planet with very constrained resources, whether that's land, whether that's space for our emissions. And the bottom line is, and what I was saying about capacity was, that if you add up the capacity that we have throughout London and the different London airports, that is more than they have in places like Paris or Amsterdam. That means that we are in a good position. Let's learn to use it more effectively, and that might mean substituting trains, it might mean more video conferencing, it might mean using the capacity that is there for the genuine in long distance aviation that can't be replaced by the Eurostar, let's say, or, or similar. But let's learn to use that capacity more effectively. And let's also have prices that properly reflect the true cost of flying. Because for as long as you can go from one end of Europe to the other, you know, for 20 or 30 pounds on a, on a cut fright, cut Fly, price flight, then it's not surprising that people, it's, it's hard to say, it's not surprising that people will do that. But those prices don't properly reflect the full cost of that flight. Right, but Heathrow. Let's not look at the capacity right across the area because it's Heathrow that has to compete with Frankfurt and with Schiphol and with Paris. And we know already that there are now direct flights to the second cities of some of the emerging countries. You just can't get them from Heathrow. So people are now flying to Frankfurt via Paris. That is a loss of hard income for people here. Well, I, I disagree with that. First of all, I think you but could be true. using, well, I think you could be using the capacity in all of the different London airports more effectively, so you're not concentrating solely on Heathrow. I think you should also look at the fact that actually from the tourism aspect, more money goes out of Britain with tourists flying out of Britain on holiday than comes in from people coming in. So the economic arguments are massively overstated. And the bottom line is that there are constraints, that, and, and aviation is a really really difficult area because no one likes to be you know, given the message that you can't expand infinitely. But it is the case that if we want a livable climate into the future, if we want 
you know, a, a decent countryside and not having, you know, the amount of noise and, and stress that is caused by ever-increasing aviation, at some point you have to say stop. Okay. And we need to decide where that point is.